morning, weekday, 6 a.m. Eastern. What's your theory behind what's going on here with these sightings? Documents released via the Freedom of Information Act confirm that these types of incidents have occurred going back to 1948. Uh, the documents describe saucer-shaped objects uh, whose capabilities are vastly beyond anything that we have, the Russians have. I think the logical explanation is we're dealing with visitors from somewhere else. Regardless, uh, there are a number of cases now. I've interviewed over 120 former or retired Air Force personnel who've talked about UFO incursions at missile sites, at nuclear weapons storage areas. The incident at Malmstrom Air Force Base, Montana in 1967 did involve uh, the appearance of a saucer-shaped object above a nu nuclear missile launch site. Seconds later, all 10 of these missiles controlled by this site malfunctioned. And uh, the two officers involved, including former Captain Bob Salas, who was at the press conference on Monday, by the way, uh, testified that he was sworn to secrecy uh, and told never to discuss this. He kept his silence until 1996. All the gentlemen who appeared with me at the press club uh, believe that the American people have a right to know the facts. But they didn't necessarily believe that theory about why those 10 nuclear sites were deactivated. Why do you believe... Why do you believe so strongly that that was truly happening and that it was the result I, of, of UFOs as opposed to, let's just say, a malfunction or a military exercise? Well, what you've just said is not entirely correct. They all agree that there was no te technical explanation for what occurred. In fact, the engineering reports from Boeing Corporation stated just that. In fact, all seven of the persons who appeared with me believe that we are dealing with extraterrestrials. Some of them stated it, stated it explicitly at the press conference. What they do not necessarily agree with, uh, three, of the, three of the eight, uh, three of the seven agreed with me that these probably uh, represent, these actions represent a signal being sent. Uh, I'm of the opinion that whoever aboard these craft are telling us and the Russians, because these things have taken place in the former Soviet Union, that humans are playing with fire by possessing and threatening to use nuclear weapons. That is speculative on my part. I've always made that clear. But the persons who were at the sites, who witnessed the craft, uh, say that there is no, no technology on Earth that could account for what they witnessed. Your, your, your press conference yesterday, Robert, certainly sparked a, an awful lot of conversation uh, around, uh, around our offices yesterday. We were talking about this throughout the day. And it raised a number of questions, such as, you know, who are these aliens? Where did they come from? How did they get here? Why, if they have the technology to travel on an interstellar basis, do they care about what we're doing? I have a book called UFOs and Nukes. I devote an entire chapter to attempting to answer the questions you've just asked. Mm -hmm. Um, I think most of the answers to those questions are in the realm of speculation, frankly. Uh, we don't know. Uh, the people at the Pentagon and the CIA and the Kremlin may know the answers to your questions. However, what I simply point out is that you have countless uh, incidents now, and, and I've, again, I've investigated over 100 of them and have over 100 witnesses indicate that craft of vastly superior capabilities have been monitoring the U.S. nuclear arms program uh, since the 1940s and on occasion, according to these ex-military personnel, have tampered with the weapons. Uh, what I also point out is the persons who spoke with me on Monday, by the way, again at mm -hmm. the press club, mm -hmm. were persons who were vetted by the U.S. government to launch or otherwise operate weapons of mass destruction. Right. These are clearly... So clearly level-headed persons that are now saying that UFOs have shut down our nuclear weapons. Well, so the question remains then, I mean, this has been the subject of conspiracy theories for decades, as you referred to the Freedom of Information Act freeing up some of this testimony so that people can read it. What does the government have to gain by blanket denying that we've ever been visited by UFOs? Uh, the... RAND Corporation, which is a think tank, did a study for the Air Force in 1968. The Brookings Institution, which is a think tank, did a study for uh, NASA in 1959, I believe, in which they said basically if extraterrestrials are here, governments have nothing to gain and everything to lose by admitting that it, without knowing the full intentions of whoever might be here. Uh, are they hostile? We don't know. Uh, do they intend some uh, nefarious activities? Uh, toward humankind, we don't know. Um, so basically, you know, the odds that the U.S. government is going to admit that there are craft flying around American airspace mm -hmm. that run rings around our own aircraft, literally, mm -hmm. uh, and we hope they're friendly because we can't control them. And, oh, by the way, they seem to be interested in our nuclear weapons.